Hey! This is Almighty Oracle. Once again at Gotham Central Comics and Collectibles here in the northeast end of Mississauga. It's a windy, wintry Wednesday. It's also the Ides of March. Julius Caesar definitely didn't see that one coming. Yesterday was Pi Day, etc. etc. Always something going on, but more importantly, new books. This week, in terms of tons of ones, we got quite a few one shots. Cave Woman, Monster Dream. We have three covers from the Solinverse, which is an alternate reality in the Valiant Universe, Divinity 3. And this one features Archer and Armstrong, Escape from Gulag 936. 396. Coffin Comics has an offering of Lady Death. The current one being Extinction Express. So tiny you can't even see it, but it doesn't matter because obviously you want to look at the logo and the main character. IDW has yet another annual out this week. This one featuring the Hasbro toy line Mask, the Mobile Armored Strike Command with two covers. Pretty hefty, but it's also square bound, a little thick. Continuing with that publisher, the Deviations theme for this month features Star Trek. And if you look at the second cover here on my left, we have Captain Picard and Dr. Crusher, a la X-Files, Fox Mulder and Dana Scully. But I find from the one shots this week, Scout Comics producing some solid work, they have Little Guardians number zero. Not too many were ordered, but it's still available. However, as the thing goes with some of these, they disappear quickly. On to the real number ones. This week, Aspen has all new Soulfire number six, Michael Turner property. This comes out with six covers. However, we're only left with this one at our store. Snatch up very quickly. Fantagraphics is now in the superhero business. They have their own publishing imprint called All Time Comics. This was last week's shipment, but we never did get it until today. Destroyer, pardon me, Crime Destroyer is the title here. Reminds me of Justice League and or Avengers. The big one for this week, major hype, is Neil Gaiman's American Gods, soon to be a TV series on Stars Network, based on the novel of the same name, featuring the current, pan pardon me, featuring the Greek pantheon in modern times, trying to adjust to their humanity. I like the first cover the best, featuring the character Shadow Moon, but there are two others for your preference we have here. And on the back, it gives you a little plug into the author's own library with a nondescript scene, but kind of a diner slash saloon, or pardon me, greasy spoon scenario. DC Rebirth continues. This is the last one for a good while. They didn't go as crazy with the number 52. This is probably number 34. But after last month's zero issue, Batwoman, volume two, with regular cover by Steve Epting, and then we get the traditional variant. And also at Toronto Comic Con this weekend, any of you can grab one of these and get someone to design Kate Kane or some other character. This will be the first time that I mention uh, Boundless Comics. They're known for a little more racy slash risque content, but this cover is pretty tame in comparison. Helena Scythe. And going along that theme too, with Dynamite, we have yet another relaunch of a 60s character, Vampirella, with four covers. Main, I'm saving the best for last. We have two white covers, and the last one being a J. Scott Campbell. But the best part, it's regular price. You don't have to fork over $75 to $100 for this man's artwork. It's great. I've become more of an independent appreciator and reader, but admittedly, the books I'm going to show you, I haven't really opened, but I do want to put them out there for our general audience. Dark Horse has Ether number five, Matt Kent. He did release Grass Kings number one last week from Boom. It's good to see that he has other options in terms of his work or other avenues, pardon me. Scout Comics, yet again with Fisheye number two. It's a detective noir genre in modern times, a little more gory and graphic. And I went to see this movie Monday 
better than I expected. Boom has the main series. It's already at number nine, which surprises me because originally this was billed as a mini, but they decided to promote it to a monthly ongoing. Watch this movie. It's really good. Tons of image this week. And again, I will have to say, I'm not really opening the books, but East of West, Jonathan Hickman, his sci-fi Western, with this theme's variant, Women of History, in honor of International Women's Day, which was last Wednesday. We have Eclipse, sci-fi, the world, solar flares, etc., etc. God Country has really picked up some heat. Number one just came out January, and it's already selling for $50 raw on eBay. Get your hands on one. And number one third printing came out today as well. Number two second print. But Danny Cates, pardon me, Donnie Cates is on a roll. Local guy hitting it big. This series is back, Head Lopper. And even though it says here, one of four is a continuation, a brand new miniseries, the Head Lopper and the Crimson Tower, plus quarterly, which means you'll get four issues throughout the year, every three months. I like them because they're a little hefty, but they're well-priced. And when you have do-it-yourself within, always a good thing. Horizon, yet another sci-fi book. I like how the back gives you a little indication of what to expect. And this was overshipped, but it is crime as well. And uh, Ed Brubaker promises an excellent read. Therefore, someone like me can take advantage of not having to worry about sellouts since we have a little more copies than usual at no charge. And finally, the adventures of Lewis and Clark, those American explorers, not Lois and Clark, continues as Menace Has Destiny returns to the shelves once more. It's not just about their actual expeditions. We have some monsters thrown in there as they make their way across the West, dealing with the native tribes and those things I just mentioned, the creatures. Of the unknown. It'll always be impossible to ignore the top two, the big two. It's just, you can't. And whether you appreciate those books, you like to collect them, you want to read them, etc., etc., I'm going to push two Batman titles. The first being All Star Batman by Scott Snyder with a rotating artist roster. This particular storyline, Ends of the Earth, part three of four. It's separate, but somewhat interconnected. The first one had Mr. Freeze, second one had Poison Ivy, but this one has the Mad Hatter. And I like this cover because it really depicts the insanity behind that character. And Bats is in for a really hard time trying to deal with Jervis Tetch. Plus, Jervis Tetch is also on Gotham currently. No coincidence, I don't think. But here's cover three of three as well. Once again, referring to the Dark Knight, Tom King, I have to admit, when he signed on to do this regular, I was doubtful because who could top Scott Snyder? Who could hold a candle to his work? But objectively speaking, I am so impressed. I finally figured out the interconnected themes between all his arcs. And Bane makes short work of the rogues gallery here. He is definitely badass. And I never really appreciated his character or care for him until this current storyline. On to the formerly known Timely Comics. And if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, that's Marvel. Last issue of the mini, Monsters Unleashed number five. Only supposed to have been a mini, but now will become a monthly. Ugh, and they're relaunching it. But anyways, the importance of this very last issue is the introduction of a brand new character, Kid Kaiju. Name says it all, but I'm gonna spoil it somewhat. He's an inhuman who has a relationship with all creatures, great and small. Here's a variant, but I like it because there's a design on the back. Actually, that's what they're known as, design variants, or sometimes artist variants. Almost the same thing, but not quite. But there you go. Teenage Hero, and that is Marvel's current trend, which I approve of. We have Riri Williams, Kamala Khan, and now this young guy in the mix as well. Nightwing Must Die Part 2 features someone from an alternate future, Deathwing, who is Dick Grayson, but obviously not of the good kind. And from last week's reveal in Action Comics number 75, the Superman Reborn storyline continues. And if you didn't read it last week, sorry, but this is the big bad behind the Man of Steel. 
However, I will say it's a bit of a letdown, especially the cover here, since it's showing Mr. Oz, but he's not even mentioned, let alone in one panel. Major fake out, not impressed by that. Two Venomized covers this week, one having, I'll show you in a second, which will be my book of the week, but the only other one this week is Amadeus Cho, The Totally Awesome Hulk. Oh, never mind. Here it is. Amazing Spider-Man number 25, which is uh, almost 100 pages, $10 book, worth it. But this one costs a little more because it is a variant featuring the symbiote. And a little late in arriving, but that's uh, the company's fault, no one else's. The Joe Jusco variants from last month. There was one that had been forgotten. Frank Castle, The Punisher, number 10. Corner box variant. I have all the rest. Probably will frame them too, because that's how great they are. Time for Book of the Week. Today I choose the amazing Arachnid, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. 25th issue anniversary. It's also almost 100 pages with ads. $10. Well worth it because if nothing else, Stuart Immonen is back on the book. Or actually maybe his first time drawing it. Either way, he's a Canadian artist and Dan Slott has brought him in for the current arc called The Osborne Identity. There are six separate stories in here, but the main one itself is double-sized at 40 pages. So again, worth your dollar and to appreciate Mr. Immonen's art. Early on, we got a double-page spread of Peter with his longtime ally, Bobby Morse, a.k.a. Mockingbird. They're on the hunt for Norman Osborn, who at this point has become the Goblin King. And Spidey caught wind of that, thanks to another longtime adversary of his that many would not remember, the Kingpin. As the story progresses, we got some allies, like a snippet of Daredevil here. There are two heroic tarantulas here. And in between trying to find Norman, we have someone behind the scenes sabotaging. Can you recognize just from this in stealth mode? At first, I wasn't really paying attention, but now that I have my finger right there, it's pretty clear as to the identity. Anyways, the point being that halfway through, they get to capture the Goblin King with the introduction of a new character, Dr. Dragovic. However, when he is apprehended and taken to S.H.I.E.L.D., DNA tests show that it is not Norman himself. This then takes you to the second half where Peter ventures to Hong Kong and while on a flight, he attempts to ask out Bobby very awkwardly considering Aunt May is sitting right behind in the next seat and drops her own little comment. Either way, you get some good shots here, action shots as they take down the gangs of Hong Kong. But the stealth character is back, this time as a sniper. The two heroes are able to spot her. And lo and behold, it ends up being... Dun, dun, dun. Resurrected. Question mark. She died. Ends of the earth, almost five years ago. Once again, we really appreciate your viewership. Click here to subscribe and follow. And I have to admit, I am starving, even though I just had a snack beforehand. But all this talk has made me quite hungry. And Pi Day was yesterday, but whatever. I can uh, break the rules in that respect. And until another seven days, this is Almighty Oracle signing off.